Greetings fellow travelers and welcome back to the Moat Marine Laboratory and Aquarium. Last time we visited we trekked through the indoor portion of the main building. Today we will continue our journey by stepping outside and visiting the Florida coastal ecosystems. These coastal ecosystems provide vital seafood, rich natural beauty, and critical services from protection against storms and cleaner water. Nearly 40% of U.S. residents live in coastal areas, and Florida coastal waters are fringed by mangroves from Tampa Bay to the Indian River Lagoon. In the first tank we have been viewing talks about how moat marine laboratory scientists are studying potential benefits Caribbean king crabs may have for local reefs, as well as how they are affected by two big challenges facing coral reefs elevated temperature, and ocean acidification. These next two aquariums tell us about life in seagrass bed. Many marine animals rely on seagrass for food and others for shelter, but certain species of seahorses and pipefish spend a lifetime in this habitat. Protecting the grass flats is especially important in seahorse conservation. To protect themselves, many marine animals have special adaptations. Some use poison or venom. Others have grown sharp spines or barbs like the scrawled cowfish. Some species use camouflage to hide in plain sight. The buffalo trunkfish is one example of this, whose color can vary to blend in with the background. Some animals, like the squid for instance, hide behind a smoke screen of ink and escape in a burst of speed. All these adaptations help animals survive in an ocean where there's usually a bigger, stronger, and faster predator waiting to make a meal out of them. The animals in this exhibit are patient predators and masters of the skies like the spotted scorpion fish, which is able to remain motionless for hours as they wait for prey to approach within striking distance. Able to blend perfectly into their environment to maximize their chances of surprising prey at the last possible minute. Their camouflage also helps them avoid being spotted by their own predators. At Mangrove Island, we learn that mangroves are unusual trees because they can grow in salt water. We also learn why they are important. They help keep our oceans clean and healthy by trapping pollution. Their roots build up sand and help keep islands and beaches from washing away. And these trees provide food to homes for many different kinds of marine animals. And here we learn about scallop research at Moat Marine Laboratory. Bay scallops are known as the indicator species within our waters. Their population numbers illustrate the general health of the ecosystem. Scallops rely on clean water and healthy seagrass beds. Over the last several decades, dredging, overharvesting, and poor water quality have devastated grass beds and scallop numbers have plummeted. Scallops, which used to be found throughout Florida's west coast, now live in sparse, localized populations. And here we learn about the evolution of shark research and moat. For centuries, mankind has feared sharks, Considering them mindless eating machines, sharks were avoided or even hunted and killed well into the 20th century. Little was known about sharks and few people wanted to get close enough to learn more. However, important research during the past half century has revealed the complexity of this fascinating animal. Ongoing shark studies can even help us understand human biology in an environment we all share. Dr. Eugenia Clark is one of the first scientists to study living sharks in a serious and systematic way. Dr. Clark is already a renowned expert on poisonous fishes. During her time at Cape Hayes Marine Laboratory, here she began her intensive study of sharks, a research endeavor that would later earn her the nickname Shark Lady. In 1959, Dr. Clark published a groundbreaking series of experiments in which lemon sharks were trained to press a target in order to receive food. The studies proved that sharks could learn, challenging the common perception of the shark as a mindless monster. Her subsequent research continued to expand our understanding of shark distribution, reproduction, and behavior. In 1967, Dr. Gilbert took over as director of the Cape Hayes Marine Laboratory, soon renamed Moat Marine Laboratory. And during the 1960s, Dr. Gilbert published more than 40 articles on shark vision, reproduction, distribution, and behavior. Under this new leadership, Moat solidified its reputation as a world leader in shark studies, exploring all aspects of shark biology, also expanding research to include biomedical. By the late 1980s, a change in focus began, as many of the shark populations become threatened, primarily by overfishing. Moat scientists responded with a series of environmental and conservation biology studies. In 1991, U.S. Congress established this lab as the National Center for Shark Research, solidifying its legacy as the world's largest research center dedicated to the study of sharks, rays, and skates. And here we learn about Florida bays. 
which are places where the fresh water flows from land to meet the salty water of the sea. Bays in this region, Tampa Bay, Sarasota Bay, and Charlotte Harbor, provide important breeding and foraging grounds for thousands of animal species, from bony fish to bonnethead sharks to marine mammals and sea turtles. Important plant species associated with bays include mangroves and seagrasses. Moat scientists study many species that live in the bays for all or part of their lives, including scallops, sea turtles, dolphins, manatees, and sharks. They also monitor water quality for resource managers who are responsible for protecting our coastal waterways. This area teaches us what mollusks are, what their shells are made of, and how acidification of the ocean affects these mollusks. This display gives us some examples of what can be found on southwest Florida beaches. Here we learn about the Moat Aquaculture Research Park. The Moat Marine Laboratory scientists recognize the critical need for sustainable aquaculture or fish farming systems to feed the world, restock depleted species, and develop a viable domestic aquacultural industry in the U.S. In 2001, Moat began construction of the Aquaculture Research Park in eastern Sarasota County. There are more than 1,000 species of sharks and their cousins, skates and rays, recognized worldwide. Today, many are threatened by overfishing, habitat destruction, and other environmental impacts studied by MOAT's researchers. MOAT supports many science-based conservation efforts designed to protect sharks in the wild. Using cutting-edge technology to unlock the mysteries of shark behavior and psychology, these studies often involve the use of data loggers, that allow researchers to look in minute detail at shark behavior and activity. Marine biomedical research focuses on basic and applied research working with marine organisms as laboratory animal models. A major research effort is directed at understanding why sharks and their skate and ray relatives have a low rate of disease and how these findings could be applied to human disease, especially difficult to treat human cancers. And here they also research marine immunology which uses both basic and applied research functions in marine animals and the implications these studies hold for human health. These studies hold the potential for providing important and groundbreaking insights into our own immune systems, as well as treatments for some of our most serious cancers. The Sensory Biology and Behavior Program brings together researchers with different expertise to better understand not only how each sense works in each species, but how each sense with the species other senses how sight and smell work together to help sharks survive, for example. These studies help us to understand how changes in habitat affect species survival in the wild. Through laboratory and field research, scientists study the abundance and movement patterns, population dynamics, behavior and health of sharks and rays, and promote science-based conservation of depleted shark populations. By culturing animals in-house, moat lessens the need to collect from wild populations. One species cultured here is the neon goby. This cleaner fish provides services such as removing dead skin from other fishes found on healthy coral reefs. Raising them here benefits other fishes and habitats in moat aquarium. When we come back to the moat aquarium, we will cross the street and take a look at the resident sea turtles, manatees, and otters. Thank you for joining me. This is Brad, and I will see you where our adventures take us next. Until next time, safe travels, everyone.